In Uganda, as on Wednesday, they declared an end to an Ebola virus outbreak that emerged almost four months ago and claimed the lives of 55 people. Uganda's Health Minister Jane Ruth Asenk said at a ceremony in the central district of Mubende, where the disease was first detected in September, that the outbreak has been successfully controlled. The move was confirmed in a statement issued by the World Health Organization, whose chief, Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, hailed the East African country's robust and comprehensive response to the widely feared hemorrhagic fever. Aseng said uh, January 11th marked 113 days since the start of the epidemic, which was uh, spread to the capital, Kampala. Under the WHO's criteria, an outbreak of the disease officially ends when there are no new cases for 42 consecutive days, twice the virus's incubation period. Uh, joining us is Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Henry Kiobe. He is the uh, Incident Commander, Minister of Health, Uganda. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Dr. Kiobe. Uh, thank you so much for hosting me this morning. All right. So first of all, congratulations to Uganda. Um, I think you know they've done you know a great job with uh, putting an end to the Ebola outbreak. Um, but let's you know talk about you know the um, process you know and uh, you know how this was achieved. Um, they of course went through different uh, stages. Uh, ramping up key control measures, uh, of course, uh, such as uh, the surveillance, contact, tr contact tracing, infection prevention and control. Um, is this exactly what needed to be done? And are there other things that you know, your country also needed to put in place? Uh, thank you so much. Precisely what we did is uh, what was needed to be done in the right time. And we think these efforts that have brought this outbreak to the speedy end, uh, noting that we are able to control transmission within only 69 days. Of course, the 42 days, the mandatory period of ensuring that there's no further transmission. So the measures that we put in place, uh, of course, in addition to the traditional control measures, contact tracing, surveillance, isolation of patients, but of course, we had other additional measures that included uh, that included a selective restriction of movement, quarantining of individuals, and of course, deployment of a mobile and field lab in this epicenter so that we reduce the turnaround time and having all the facilities that we needed in the time to the extent that we, in Kampala we devote much more capacity than actually what we used in anticipation of a major flare in, in Kampala, which never happened because of the measures that we put in place. I mean, that, that's great news to see these measures being put in place and having achieved this result. Uh, let's talk about how many cases of Ebola in total that uh, was witnessed in this incident. How many cases confirmed deaths and recovery? So if you can give us some numbers, we'd, we'd really appreciate that. Perfect. Are we, of course, the, by the time we unmasked the, uh, this outbreak, we think around 19 individuals had died. But in between also, we had... Uh, other three individuals whom we couldn't uh, get samples to confirm. That number comes to 22. But those that were confirmed were 142. When you add the 22, the numbers come to 164. And the confirmed dates, we have 55. And the good news is that we have 87 survivors of all age groups. But of course, we see that initially this outbreak was the mainly disease of women and children but progressively this transitioned and became a disease of male young adults and of course now we're having a bigger number of of course in a range of 55 55 to 45 male more than female largely in the age group of 20 to 49. Lord, um, i want to talk about vaccines also there were reports in, in december that there were trial vaccines you know that had been sent to the uh, to uganda um, can you give us any updates on how that played out? You know, and has there been any further development of the vaccines? So to say that vaccines had no role in the control of this outbreak in Uganda, the fact that the vaccines actually came late. But even then, these vaccines came through, uh, there were trial vaccines. So the processes of preparations, uh, the setting of the clinical trials took time. And by the time the vaccines arrived here, we had we had no more patients or uh, eligible individuals for for vaccination recalling that the design of the vaccine trials was supposed to be based or targeting contacts or the exposed individuals by the time the vaccines came through we didn't have 
any eligible individuals to try the vaccines. We have 5, 000, over 5,000 vaccines in the country, which we couldn't use because we didn't have the, the, the eligible individuals for testing these vaccines. Yes, we have vaccines in the country, but they were never used in this time. All right, um, as we round up, let's talk about a round of the conversation. Let's talk about the lessons that may have been learned. You know, it's, it's a great news to see that Ebola has been defeated in Uganda. But we've seen in several situations where there have been repeat incidences. So what would you say are some of the lessons that we've learned in defeating Ebola that could maybe also help in the fight against COVID-19? So uh, the one of the lessons that we see here is, uh, is the leadership at all levels of government and making correct decisions in the right time and allowing the national authorities be in the lead. Uh, you see here his excellency president himself took lead of the response and the guiding most of the of the interventions one of them as i said the restrict the selective restriction of movement which played a key role to make sure that we don't have more spillovers in kampala or other other large cities knowing that large cities control ebola is very difficult that was key key coming from leadership and of course the other part being that uh, application of these interventions in the right time, in the right places, and applying them in the right time. Because noting that we had uh, three cycles of uh, incubation period of restricted movement in these places. So that's one of the things that we think uh, we really worked on well. We also see that we had uh, we had a, a field laboratory so that we reduced the turnaround time. So it took us very short time, say less than a day, to process patients suspected either move them into confirmed cases or, or, or being discharged or reclassified as no, as no case. But more, more and more importantly, progressively as the information we kept giving the people, they understood the dangers of Ebola and they appreciated and took on the measures. So I think it's a combination of these efforts, or of course not forgetting the partners that worked, whom we worked with at all levels of the response. But most importantly, the, the partners, the communities, uh, the leadership, but more importantly, the communities that actually adjusted their ways of life to be able to, uh, to respond to, to, to the outbreak. All right, well, a final question. I just want to ask, um, because we're hoping that we no longer get to, get, no longer get to talk about um, Ebola in Uganda, but um, are, we, are we certain that this will not, reoccur anytime in the future and what are the things that maybe the people of uganda need to learn um, about the things that they consume and maybe the way of life to ensure that this never comes back um and is, is there any clarity as to what even where this you know current outbreak which has been dealt with now uh, came from we are certain that the current outbreak is, is over the transmission has been fully interrupted but i want you to recall and the world to know that the virus, the reservoirs, are in the jungle, where the virus lives in the bats, we think, and lives there innocently. So all the time, they usually breaches. And it does, we need to understand the human, the human behaviors that bring individuals in contact or close with these wild animals where the virus is. So that is one of the ways. But the key thing here is that we can't for good and completely seal and not have uh, uh, wild human breach spillovers. That is certain. But what is important is are people to understand, the populations to know the, the symptoms. Of course, not malaria here is very endemic, and the key presentation of malaria and Ebola is the same. But it works on the response mechanisms for health workers to appreciate this. But one of the things that we need to the population needs to keep be keen on is hand hygiene and ensuring any unusual deaths or any unusual hemorrhagic manifestations that is bleeding from all parts arising out of febrile illnesses which mimic actually the endemic disease like anemia we pay keen interest on this all right um dr henry kiobe thank you very much for joining us this morning do enjoy the rest of your day and congratulations to the people of uganda thank you so much